All right. Welcome to our Sprint 16 review. Uh, here's our burn down chart from this last sprint, uh, which is awesome. Um, I think there's one ticket in, um, in peer review that'll make it go down a little bit more and there's none in to do. So we only have a couple left in progress. Um, so the burn down chart looks awesome. I'm gonna do a little traffic summary over the last couple or last three weeks. Um, so BCMI, um, we had a lot more traffic this last uh, three weeks than the three weeks beforehand. Um, and surprisingly, since now we have 65 more, or I guess 35 more mines on there, um, the popular mines have shifted a bit. So I know they used to be like Red Chris and Highland Valley Copper and stuff, but this time it was Mount Milligan and Myra Falls. Um, and also the map was quite popular, which is interesting because the map looks quite different now. Instead of just the 30 pins, there's 65. So it's a little bit more, um, a lot more information in there now, which is cool. Um, for Epic, um, same thing, more traffic over this last three weeks, which makes sense. The holidays are over and everything. Um, and for some reason, searching on the Peace region was popular in Epic over the last couple of weeks. Um, it is actually more popular. This, uh, the search term on Peace region was more popular than the current comp period that was ongoing, which is interesting. Uh, LNG, um, so there was 8% of the visitors over the last little while were going to the Coastal Gas Link Indigenous Nation page. Um, so that was pretty popular. And you'll notice that from, I think it's the 19th or 20th and then onwards, the page got more views. Um, and I know Nicole, we met with Darren on the 20th. So I have a feeling that's what it was from, probably from us going to the page quite a bit after that. Um, for NERCID, um, probably about average, um, Average traffic a little bit more over the last week or so. Um, and 4% of the users were searching the term blind bay. Um, for some reason, that was popular the last little while. All right, so our sprint goals this last sprint, um, we want to move all of our products to OpenShift 4, which we did. So we moved Epic, NRPTI, LNG, NERCID, BCMI, everything is now at OpenShift 4, which is awesome. Um, we also wanted to get the uh, meat inspections and from Ministry of Agriculture and the Ministry of Environment court convictions to be imported via CSV into NRPTI for NERCID. Uh, we've got the meat inspections in there and I know the court convictions is in progress right now. Um, and I think close to, close to being finished. Um, so that one is still in progress, but mostly done. And then finally, our last goal was uh, making some updates to project notifications for EPIC. Uh, so we wanted to add the um, ability for users to attach a document to a uh, public comment period on a project notification. Uh, so that one's still in progress as well. All right, so for the demo today, we're gonna demo, uh, I think Neil's gonna talk about the OpenShift 4 transition and then Morgan's gonna demo some of the new CSV imports. Uh, so Neil, I'll bring up the plan that you created for, um, for our transition if you wanna talk about it. Sure. Yeah, so here is the diagram that I made before we did the Epic cutover to OpenShift 4. So what we're basically doing is we want to make sure there's no data changes where, where, while we're doing this cutover. So the first step we did was to turn off the admin interface. This way, uh, we don't have admin users going in there by accident and then start updating the data while we're doing the transfer from OpenShift 3 to OpenShift 4. Um, so once we have disabled the MA interface, uh, next thing I did was uh, create a restore of the OpenShift 3 database and then restore it back into the OpenShift 4 database. Once this is done, um, I went into our reverse proxy and made sure to have it to make the reverse proxy point um, towards uh, to our OpenShift 4 services. So any user that comes into OpenShift 3 via our URL actually get redirected to our OpenShift 4 services. And so from that point on, we, <clears throat> we tested to see um, when we go into our URL to make sure it's actually going to our OpenShift 4 and not OpenShift 3. And after the first test is correct, and we are able to turn off our services in OpenShift 3. And then we did another test to just double make sure um, it's not it, it is actually still going over to OpenShift 4. And from that point on, um, we are sure that it's working correctly and we are able to open a service ticket 
with um, IIT to have our URLs DNS updated so they don't require a proxy to go over to OpenShift 4. And that took a couple of days once um, I received confirmation from IIT that the DNS has been updated. We did another test. We turned off the reverse proxy OpenShift 3 because we don't need it anymore. And then we did another test to make sure the URL is still working correctly. And then after that po point on, we know the transition is complete and we are able to go into OpenShift 3 and just do our cleanup and delete all the objects we don't need and have the platform services remove the OpenShift 3 namespace. That, that is the basic plan. It, it's quite simple. It just, the main point about this is just to make sure there are no changes to the database while we are doing the restore from OpenShift 3 to OpenShift 4. And then just to make sure the URLs are still working as expected. Thanks, Neil. Uh, any questions on that? Uh, I think one cool thing that, or I mean, maybe not cool, but last week, I think it would have been, um, we were trying to schedule one to do the epic prod cut over for OpenShift 4 and um, was talking to EAO and they actually had a, um, a pretty popular comp period coming up. And so we were gonna do the, the shift on Monday, but we ended up having to bump it up to Thursday and do it pretty quickly. And it went relatively smooth. So I think um, that's sort of a win for our team in the fact that we were able to kind of um, schedule it around the business's needs for that. Um, and yeah, I know um, there's a little, there's a couple issues with Epic going down every once in a while that has to do with some of the networking issues, but overall the um, transition's been pretty smooth on all our applications. All right, uh, so the next piece of the demo, I'm gonna hand it off to Morgan. Good morning. Share. My screen shared here. Can you see my screen? Okay, so first I will demo the agriculture meat inspections uh, import that's already up in test. So we've got our new CSV type. Down. It's agri inspection system compliance issues. That one there, yeah. not test this in our new silver cluster spot yet. Did I kill the API? Good test for our, our new OpenShift. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the job is not working in Silver Cluster. Right now. While I wait for that to load, I'll switch over to my local and show the uh, Coors Court Convictions import that's up for PRV right now. Just had to make a minor tweak this morning uh, to address some issues. So in these Coor court convictions, there can be multiple rows uh, per uh, record. And those multiple rows are each a unique penalty to that record. There's a bit of special handling needed for that. I'll go to the all records page. It's just not a demo if everything doesn't freeze. Yeah. 
what's going on. Yeah. That was in your local, right, Morgan? That other one? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. I re recommend just do it on your local for now. There's an issue with the test API. Okay. Just wait for key flow. <laughs> Report convictions again, start a job. Now the page should update on its own as we have the new config service updater going. So that's already completed. That one's fast. All records this time. And now we have all these case numbers. So you'll see a lot of these look like duplicates, uh, but they are actually different records because they each apply to a different legislation. Now there are some records in here. Let's see, where's the one on there? Uh, that have multiple penalties attached to them. And in the CSV, those are three separate rows. So a little bit of extra handling and checking. And we're looking into using another one of the fields as like a source ref for the penalties. Uh, right now we're using some like time-based uh, thing to double check that we don't need to update these penalties because there's no unique reference to tell which one we need to update. So after like two minutes, we say, oh, that's an old record. We have to completely update it and wipe the penalties out and update them from the CSV. Yeah, I've dropped a line to Miwa at uh, Conservation Officer Service. So she should be able to tell me if it's uh, persistent or not. Yeah, and if it's persistent, we have a source ref and can have a more concrete way of updating that. And now I'll switch back to the reports page for some meat inspections. There's my meat inspection complete. Back to all records. And we have a new filter for the meat inspections, Agri NIS. And so here's our new inspections. And yeah, that's it for the new CSVs for now. Uh, should be getting the Coors Port convictions in later today. Awesome, thanks, Morgan. Okay. Okay. Uh, just wanted to mention some of the other work that we completed this last sprint is um, for Amy and Harpreet. Uh, for you guys, we increased the um, record upload size in NRPTI. Um, so when we push that to production, you guys should be able to load something up to 25 megabytes. Um, so hopefully that'll help with some of the problems you guys were facing last week. Uh, we also updated BCMI and NRPTI. So anywhere that said EMPR now says EMLI. Um, and we also updated the statistics on the BCMI page this morning. Uh, so thanks for jumping on that really quickly, you guys. Um, we had a couple of bug fixes that came up this sprint that we resolved. Um, we also um, 
I know Max, you worked on the redaction logic in search to prevent um, any privacy breaches. So that's in NERCID um, being able to, previously you could search a specific person's name and even though the name was redacted, the record would come up. Um, so now that's no longer happening. Um, and I know Morgan, you worked on the integration tests for the search controller, so those were completed. Um, and over the last little while, we cleaned up a bunch of more namespaces in OpenShift 3. Uh, so for NERCID, I'm going to go back to our table here of all the different systems. So this was where we started last sprint. Um, so these are all the ones, the ones in green are the ones that are done. Um, and then moving to this sprint, uh, so here we've got the meat inspections is now done and we've got the court convictions uh, in progress and all changes to done for next sprint. Um, and I know for our next sprint coming up, we're going to be working on a lot of the, these manual roles. So like the environmental EPD, um, this is basically one chunk of work for one role. So we're going to be doing that in the next sprint here. Um, but this is, this is our goal for finishing for this fiscal and I think we're making pretty good progress here. All right, so our upcoming work for the next uh, three weeks. Um, we're going to be making some more improvements to the project notification um, details and card layout in Epic. Um, so those are things that have been requested from EAO based on um, based on using the project notifications for the past little while. Um, and I think some of these updates is going to help them with um, tracking the project notifications, which will be good. Um, we're also going to make some new roles in NRPTI so that different businesses can come in and manually upload um, their own records. Uh, so we're going to focus on the, the general Flynn Row role. Um, so that's for, um, the, for, I think it's for Water Sustainability Act and um, CAS was the, or I think was the other one, or yeah, that was the other one for that general Flynn Row one. And then we're going to make an agriculture role for the Ministry of Agriculture and then an environmental, um, Ministry of Environment, Environmental Protection Division role and an agricultural land commission role as well. And finally, our last goal is going to be um, to continue with the CSV imports. Um, so that's going to be for the agricultural inspections, um, the admin sanctions from Ministry of Environment and Flinro, and uh, the natural resource officer tickets. Um, so I think as some of the team knows, we're going to be kind of doing two things in parallel. So we're going to be doing, working on these CSV imports to make sure we can get the data into NRPTI for NERCID, um, as well as working on um, using FME to create um, a connection between some of these zone B legacy systems into OpenShift 4. So we're going to do both in parallel just to make sure that we meet our goals um, and automate it if it's possible. So any questions from anybody? Awesome. Okay, thanks everyone.